Today I'm talking to Stuart Giddens, content strategist for the charity in the UK, Veganary. Hi Stuart, thanks so much for joining me today. Hi Robert. We say that the hardest thing about Veganuary is pronouncing the word Veganuary. So it's vegan plus January, Veganuary. What is Veganuary? It's only January 1st to the 31st, right? Well, originally that was what it was, yeah. So the idea of Veganuary came about 10 years ago when the founders, uh, Jane and Matthew, uh, wanted to do something to help promote veganism. And they felt that a lot of the information that was around about veganism was all about the reasons why people should go vegan. But there wasn't a lot of information about how to do it, resources on, on that would help people try vegan if they wanted to. So they came up with this concept of people taking on a challenge, or we call it a pledge, to eat vegan and eat plant-based for a month for 31 days and that was veganuary they decided the best time to try and do this was january because it would work with people's new year's resolutions yeah it grew from there really and now although most people do do it in january actually you can sign up anytime so any day of the year you could start and from that date you could eat vegan for 31 days and and do a veganuary challenge we're not so focused on it being a bunch of rules that you have to stick to. We just want it to be an opportunity for people to learn more about veganism. That's awesome. I really like that. I'm on my fourth day of being completely vegan. I'm filming a recipe a day. What can you eat and not eat? The idea is that you don't eat any product that comes from an animal. So that means you don't eat any meat, fish, eggs or cheese or any other kind of dairy. So those are the things you can't eat. This year, the theme of Veganuary is called Vote for Veggies. And we're really focusing on um, encouraging people to eat whole foods, vegetables. So you can replace those things with... You know, mushrooms and tofu and tempeh and beans and lentils and aubergine and all kinds of things. Um, something that I've always found exciting when I switched from being an omnivore to a vegan was discovering all these exciting new vegetables that I'd never eaten or cooked with before. And then there's lots of meat substitutes and stuff available as well. Fake chicken and fake sausages and fake burgers that you can eat. So I think the idea that being vegan really limits what you can eat is probably a thing of the past. The thing I like the most about being a vegan is just doing veganary for one month it would save 281 grams of harmful carbon dioxide emissions and the lives of 30 animals. In my family of five, that's more than 1,400 kilograms of carbon and 150 animals. I'm not saying everyone did that. Vegan diets result in 75% less climate heating emissions, water pollution, and land use than diets in which more than 100 grams of meat a day was eaten. Vegan diets also cut the destruction of wildlife by 66%. If we all went vegan, scientists believe the world's food-related emissions might drop by 68% within 15 years, during saving 8 billion tons of CO2 equivalent and limiting catastrophic climate destruction. You don't even need to do it every day. You could start small, like a meatless Monday. Just doing it once a week could save 143 kilograms of CO2 per year for one person. How many people signed up to do it? In Eating less meat and less animal products is a really powerful tool to help the environment when we're in this time of climate catastrophe. We measure how many people go to our website and sign up. And when they sign up, they give us their email address and we send them lots of hints and tips and resources and meal plans and recipes and all those kinds of things. And last year, over 700,000 people did that around the world. We're a UK-based charity, but we also operate in the US, in Germany, uh, in Latin America and Brazil, also in India. We work with partners in other countries, Italy and France and Australia. So that's 700,000 people that actually formally signed up. 
But then we conducted a piece of research. We think that lots more people participate without actually doing it formally. Um, so our YouGov poll found that in the UK, 4% of respondents had taken part in Veganuary. In the US, it was 7% of respondents. In Germany, it was 9% of respondents. So that actually translates as millions of people. And that was just in one year. We've been going 10 years. So over the years, millions of people have tried a plant-based diet with Veganuary. And when you look at the kind of climate stats you were talking about and you apply those to a million people it's it's quite astounding really so a million people trying vegan for one month will save 6.2 million liters of water they'll save the equivalent greenhouse gas emissions of 1.2 million flights from london to paris and they'll stop the equivalent of 1,645 tonnes of sewage running into our waterways. And best of all, because I love animals, they would spare the lives of 3.4 million animals. It's a really impactful thing that we can all do when we all do it together. It's really awesome. <laughs> the question I hear most about being a vegan is how do you get enough protein? Can you answer that? One thing that I always like to say before answering this question is that we've sort of been duped into thinking that we need more protein than we actually do. So here in the UK, we have the National Health Service and the National Health Service recommends uh, that you should have a certain amount of protein for each kilogram that you weigh. But basically what that works out as is that the average man should have 55 grams of protein a day and the average woman should have 45 grams of protein a day. But research has found that in Europe, the average European actually eats 80 grams of protein a day so much more than they're advised to i don't know what the stats are over the other side of the pond but i'm sure you'd see similar trends so that's the first thing to, to bear in mind there's lots of clever marketing around lots of food products that are, are rich in protein it's a bit misleading i would say before you think about where you're going to get your protein actually have a think about how much protein you need and are you eating more than you should already and then to actually answer the question where you get protein from vegan food, it's actually quite easy. Things like tofu and tempeh, soya-based products, are really rich in uh, protein. Seitan, which is a wheat-based product, which is often used to replicate the texture of meat, is really good for protein. Legumes, things like beans and peanuts, are really good sources of protein and nuts as well. So there's lots and lots of plants that are, are great, full of protein. That's really interesting. Lots of people say being a vegan is expensive, but I think it's like any diet. It can be as expensive as you want it to be. If you're going to live on pre-cooked frozen food, then yes, it is. But if you eat that way, so is being a meat eater. An Oxford University study says that eating vegan slashes your grocery bill by one third. What are your tricks for keeping a vegan diet? Cheap. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. When you make any change in diet, it can initially be very expensive. I think when people switch to a vegan diet, they often feel like they need to go and buy lots of fancy ingredients. So the initial outlays can often be quite expensive. But actually, I think, and research backs me up, and the research you just cited as well, but we asked a company called Kantar in 2020 to do some research on this, and they found that vegan households actually spend 8% less per grocery shop than a non-vegan household so the stats suggest that it could actually be better for your budget to switch to a vegan diet and my tips for keeping things cheap because i like to keep things cheap we're experiencing here in the uk as a cost of living crisis so lots of things are getting more and more expensive energy and food and all these things so i say cook from scratch because that's a really good way to keep costs down as you said if you buy lots of processed foods those can be a bit more expensive there's lots of availability of vegetables that are tinned or frozen or dried and they can often be loads cheaper and um, you can put them in the cupboard store them for a long time so you can buy in bulk if you've got space to store the stuff and also cooking batches a lot of vegan food freezes really well if you're making things like stews and curries Lots of famous people are vegan. My mum loves Paul McCartney. I love James Cromwell, who I met at COP15, who became a vegan while filming Bib. I also like Benedict Cumberbatch, who plays Doctor Strange. Who is your favourite 
Very much vegan. You mentioned some great vegans there. I'm a big Beatles fan, so, I, you know, Paul McCartney, I'm a big fan of his. But yeah. recently, sadly, one of our um, ambassadors, Benjamin Zephaniah, passed away really recently. And he, uh, he was such a great vegan advocate, but well, he was a British Caribbean poet and musician. And he was a great outspoken uh, voice on animal rights and veganism. And he had a trick of making uh, veganism feel very normal and approachable when he spoke about it. So it was a really sad loss when we heard about his passing. I'm a, a huge music fan, music other than veganism. Music is my big passion. So um, Billie Eilish, I think is, you know, a really exciting uh, voice for veganism. And, and last year during Veganuary, she encouraged people to sign up. So I think she's probably one of the most famous people in the world. So that was very exciting. Beyonce, although Beyonce I don't think completely identifies as vegan, she has talked about eating plant-based before and I'm a huge Beyonce fan so I love the fact that she is plant-based. I present the Veganuary podcast and on the Veganuary podcast I've had the opportunity to speak to some famous vegans and I don't know how many of these you're going to have heard of because I think they're very British names but Chris Packham, he's a TV presenter and an environmentalist, uh, and uh, he's a really great voice for veganism. And it was a real honour to speak to him. I, I was watching him on TV when I was your age, so it was like thrilling for me to get to meet him. So, yeah, they're, they're some of my favourites. That's awesome. I also really like following Vegan Kids Dubai, Omari McQueen, and... Vegan Evan on Instagram. Are there any cool vegan kids you know out there? There's someone called Jojo Love who recorded a video for us. It's a few years ago now. He was seven. I, he's maybe 10 or 11 now, I would guess. And you'd find that video on our YouTube channel. And I loved the way he spoke about veganism and animals. And then there's uh, another vegan advocate called Genesis Butler over in the States. She's probably getting on 17 or 18 now, so I don't know if she's a vegan kid anymore. But when I started being interested in veganism, she certainly was a kid. And it's always great to have young voices advocating for plant-based diets. And then if it's not too cheesy to say, my son, so I have a son called Robin. He's going to be four later this month. And he's vegan and he loves telling people he doesn't really understand what being vegan is yet, but he does understand that he is a vegan and he loves telling people about it. And you learn so much, I think, from talking to kids about food and animals. So one thing that we notice when we're feeding Robin is if we have an alternative to meat, like a, a sausage or bits of chicken, then we say, oh, this is chicken. And he says, I don't eat chicken, chickens are animals. And we have to explain, well, it's not real chicken, you see. And I think it's interesting that as a kid, you're taught to learn to love animals, but you're also taught that it's okay to eat animals. And there's a kind of conflict there that is just ingrained into us. As we grow up, we just accept that that's what we do. But I think you learn a lot from seeing people of that age learn about food. He sounds awesome. He's a really cool dude, yeah. <laughs> The newest Health Canada food guide says Canadians should eat mostly plants, choosing alternative proteins such as tofu over food from animal sources. Vegan diets can lower blood pressure and cholesterol lower rates of heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and cancer. Are there any health risks connected with being vegan? There's lots of studies out there that will tell us that, that vegan diets are healthier because they cite the fact that type 2 diabetes is lower amongst the vegan community. Eating a vegan diet lowers your blood pressure, lowers your cholesterol, and it can be a really good aid for weight loss as well. And the reason for that is because vegans tend to eat more vegetables and less meat. Meat. and historically probably less processed food but we are in an age now where there's lots and lots more processed foods that vegans can eat and that's great because it means that it's really easy to learn to be a vegan and it makes plant-based and vegan diets really accessible 
But the negative side of that is that that food is processed and therefore it's often high in salt, high in sugar. It might not be good for you. So we have to kind of balance these things up. And I think the truth is that it's as easy to be an unhealthy vegan as it is to be an unhealthy omnivore. Because I could be vegan and I could just eat French fries all day and that wouldn't be very healthy, right? So the best thing to do is to really follow a well-planned vegan diet. So sign up to something like Veganuary or there's other things where you can find resources about how to follow a well-planned vegan diet and focus on eating healthily in the same way that you would in any other diet. So eat lots of vegetables, avoid having too much sugar, avoid having too much salt, exercise. And that's a great way to be a healthy vegan. People say you don't get enough nutrients from being a vegan, but Carl Lewis is one of the world's most famous athletes, having won nine Olympic gold medals in track. What are some tricks for good nutrition, like getting enough vitamin D, vitamin B12, ionide, selenium, calcium, and iron? So we recommend, first of all, that, that there's certain things that you should supplement um, because they are in your food when you eat meat and dairy uh, and they can be more difficult to get from your diet when you switch to vegan. They're not impossible to get. All these things are available in food, but you have to plan your diet really well and be really careful at sticking to your nutrition plan. And that can be quite difficult for everyday life. So we do recommend that people supplement B12, iodine and omega-3 and also that people supplement vitamin D. We do get vitamin D from sunlight. So usually if you're outdoors a lot in the summer months, you don't need to supplement vitamin D in that time. If it's winter and especially if you're not getting out in the sun a lot, vitamin D is a really good thing to supplement. And then otherwise, we've got lots of information when you sign up for the Veganuary Pledge on how to get different nutrition from your diet. Some tricks that I would say is a lot of things are fortified with certain vitamins. That means that the vitamins are added. So plant milks like soya milk and oat milk are often fortified with calcium and B12 and iodine. Uh, tofu is often fortified with calcium as well. So look out when you're buying vegan products for those things that have had those great vitamins added. Say I make a mistake and I accidentally eat something non-vegan, like I put honey in a sandwich by accident for my school. What happens then? Do I have to wait till next year to try again? Well, no. So what we talk about, this concept of the vegan police and that as soon as you make a mistake like the one you gave putting honey in your sandwich you get a knock at the door and there's someone there saying you just ate something that isn't vegan it doesn't happen there is no vegan police and what we really like people to focus on is intention and not perfection so if you're signing up to begin you because you want to do something great for animals or you want to have less of an impact on the planet or you want to do something good good for your health then if you make a mistake along the way it doesn't write that off you've still made a really good choice for the animals or the environment or your health you've still done something that's really having a positive impact on the world a tiny mistake doesn't nullify that so we'd say keep going and also everybody approaches veganism in their own way and in their own time scale for some people a month is enough for some people they need three months six months a year to gradually change their diet so that they're eating plant-based if that's what they want to do they might not even want to do that they might just want to pick up some tips on how they can be more flexitarian and a lot of people after they've done veganuary they don't go fully vegan but they do reduce a lot of the meat and dairy in their diet so all these things are completely legitimate ways to do veganuary and we know that some people do veganuary year on year on year they pick up more tips each time and you also might find lots of people struggle with vegan cheese they find that the vegan cheese substitutes they don't like the flavor at all but i would say well just cut, cut out everything else keep eating your cheese and just don't eat meat don't eat milk don't eat eggs what a great impact that has for animals and, and the environment and then eventually you might find the vegan cheese that you love and you can go fully vegan so vegans sometimes get a bad rap for being a bit preachy and a bit judgy and we really try to avoid that we try to have a very approachable and friendly and fun and non-judgmental approach to being vegan this has been a really great talk thank you for taking the time to chat with me today my so, pleasure remember together kids can save the world thank you 
Cheers, Robert.